Welcome to Unit 2, Lab 3, Page 2, Keeping Items from a List. This lab is a lot of fun because we're going to learn some advanced concepts that we can then use to make complex programs in the future. The key block is really powerful because it takes in two inputs, a predicate and a list, and it reports back or returns a new list. It checks each item of the list that you passed in against the predicate that you also passed in, and it keeps the list items that the predicate reports back as true. So notice that the predicate has a blank input slot. We have to leave a blank slot where we want the items from the list to be checked. So in this keep block, the code reads as follows. Keep items from the following list that report true if their length is equal to 5. So when this keep block is pressed, Snap will put Apple in the blank input slot and check to see if the length of it is equal to 5. And because Apple does have five letters, it will uh, keep <laughs> Apple in a new list that it's created. Then it goes on to banana. Banana having a length of five is false, so it doesn't get added to this new list. Then Snap will check orange, which is false. Grape, which is true because it does have five letters. Kiwi, false. Mango, true. And then finally, it checks to see the length of watermelon to see if it equals five. And since that's false, it doesn't get added to this new list. The key block will report back this list with just apple, grape, and mango, the only words that report it true for the predicate. It is important to note that keep items doesn't mutate or change the original list. It just reports back a brand new list. So we'll have to save it somehow if we want to keep it or manipulate it later on. In the starter project, we have to import our between divisible and even blocks from the previous lab page. I actually never made the integer block, so I'll probably have to make it a little bit later if I need it. I've already exported them from the previous project and imported them here. If you look at the bottom left in the operators palette, you can see that they're all there. In number three, it says to run initialize lists. And before I do that, I actually want to look inside initialize list to see what it does. And it is setting these two variables, words list and numbers list, to these values. It looks like for words list, it's going online and downloading a text file with a whole bunch of words. And for numbers list, it just set that variable to all of these numbers. Okay, in part A, we have to figure out how many 12 letter words are in words list. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the variables palette and I'm gonna drag in a keep items block. So I'm gonna create my own uh, block right here. If you don't see keep items, you might have to go to the file import and import tools just in case you don't see it. But let's see, we want to use words list, so that's also in the variables palette all the way at the top. This is going to be the list that we're going to check. And I want to keep the items such that, and you'll notice that this little input has a predicate shape inside of it. So I want to create a predicate. So I'm going to go into operators, and I want to see if I can find all the 12 letter words. So I'm going to use the, let's see, the length of, block and I have to check to see if this length equals 12. So I'm going to set it equal to 12 and now instead of length of world I'm just going to erase world. I'm going to leave it blank because snap is going to take all of the words inside of words list and it's going to put each one of them inside of this empty input slot. And there is one thing you can do if you're not comfortable leaving a block blank like that. You can click on this little black carrot on the right side and we could give it an input name. So we can call this um, word, let's say, and then we can drag this variable in here. So what it's doing is it's creating like a temporary variable, almost like a script variable inside of here. So it's setting word equal to each item inside of words list as it goes through the entire list. So this is doing the exact same thing as just leaving it blank does. Now I'm going to run it and it went through my list and you guys can see that it picked out 46 words with 12 letters each. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Uh, now for part B, we have to check to see how many words have 15 letters inside. So I'm going to change the input to 15 and I'm going to click it again and there's only three words that have 15 letters. And we'll do it again one more time for 17 letters. And there are no letters, or sorry, there's no words with 17 letters inside of words list. Next, we want to create a block 
that checks how many items in the numbers list are even or between 25 and 75 or maybe are even numbers that are greater than zero. So let me create that. Let me actually clean this up a little bit so these guys all move up. And let me go into the variables palette and create a new keep block. And now instead of using words list, I'm going to use my numbers list, which if I click it, it's going to show me all the numbers that are inside of this list. So I'm going to drag this into the input right there where it's expecting a list. And now I have to create my predicate. So we do already have predicates that I've created in the operators palette all the way at the bottom. And first I want to check if the value is even, if each one is even or how many there are that are even. I want to keep all of those by using this predicate. So when I click on this, it went through my numbers list and it only found three numbers that were even. Negative 222, negative 12, and 2. Great, so it looks like it's working. Let me just double check again. Let me look at what's inside numbers list and it doesn't look like I see any other even numbers. So it looks like it's working correctly. Next, I want to check to see if there's any numbers between 25 and 75. So I'm going to put this right there, put this block that I created in the last video, and is blank between 25 and 75. And if I click it right now, it says a variable of name upper bound does not exist in this context. Oh my gosh, let's see, there must be a mistake in here somewhere. So let me edit it, and let's see. Input value, lower bound, input value, upper bound. Oh, the, the problem is, I don't know if you guys caught this from the last video, I removed the question mark in upper bound. And over here, I never like reset it. I never brought in the new parameter without the question mark. So I think that should work. If I hit apply and I hit OK, and I throw it back into my keep items block, perfect, now it works. So these are all the numbers between 25 and 75, and there's seven of them and it looks like all these numbers are correct. And once again, in case you don't like leaving blanks, I'm gonna just click on this little black carrot and I'm gonna create an input name and because we're looking at numbers, each one is gonna be a number and I'm just gonna put that temporary variable inside there and I should still get the same answer. And lastly, for number three, I wanna check all the even numbers that are greater than zero. So we could create a new block, a new predicate, using the AND. I'm going to check to see if the number is even and it's greater than zero. So I'm going to bring in another predicate inside here and it has to be greater than zero. So I'm going to use this as my input and when I run it, there are no numbers that are even that are also greater than zero. And that is kind of weird. Um, oh, you know what? The problem is I didn't put in number. I didn't put this temporary variable that I've created, so I should put that in both spots because when it goes through the numbers list, it's going to set number equal to each item as it goes through it, and now we have one value. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't think they would ask us to like write this thing out and then not find a number, so that was my mistake for using this, uh, this variable, this temporary variable inside of this keep block. Um, and if I just look inside numbers list quickly, I am looking for a number that's even and that's greater than zero. And yeah, the only one I notice is two down here, uh, item 19. Ah, in if there's time, if you made an integer predicate in the last page, you can use it here. Remember that an integer is a whole number without any decimals. So for example, 18 and 24 are integers, but 17.9, uh, 43.3 is not. Only whole numbers are integers. And that should do it for page two. I will see you on page three.